I'm your host, Erica Salter, the Queen of Tea. Please tune in every single Tuesday. This is the whole hour of Sound of Our Teen Athletes. And all those people and businesses that support those teen athletes. You! Okay, so Alexandria has it set all in like you're a bear now. Yeah, you're all yeah. like, whoa. I have my roommate. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that was fast. I know. Facebook Seriously. really comes in handy. In wow. Do you know them? Um, no, I met them online. <laughs> wow, it's like a dating service. I know, it is. Wow. Yeah. How, so how'd you pick them? GPA? Um, what? I'm no, just asking. No, 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 no. We didn't do that. Oh, okay. Um, no, they... Match.com? There was a lot of people. <laughs> just like, no. get you knock off two so birds with one had, stone. No, they had um, just registered, and I had my profile up on there for a really long time because that's how everybody finds their roommates. Uh-huh. And you just comment on as many people that you think would be a good roommate as possible. And that we wasn't ended up, astrologically done. No, no I, I know. <laughs> well, I did ask about that too, but I don't know if that would have been great. Um, no, and they, uh, we just did FaceTime and we did different things like that and just all talked. And we're all from Southern California. And um, one's from Manhattan Beach, the other one's from La Jolla. And so, what quality do they all have? I think we all just have. Um, we're we're all kind of bubbly, I guess, <laughs> but we all have really like we all cover different areas. So, one's an econ major. I'm a psych, maybe double in business or something, and then another one's like a. Um, s- uh, biology. So, Bi- wait. Molecular cell biology, I think. Wow. Okay. Major? I'm sorry. I'm spacing out right now. (laughs) But anyway, um, so yeah, so we've just been talking a lot and trying to get to know each other more, but it's just a vibe that you get, I think, just from over the phone. Do you all do yoga or? No, it wasn't anything like that. (laughs) We. um, (laughs) Do you have similar politics? Um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people at Berkeley do, so I'm not going, but we're all very, like, neutral, too, I think, and um, they all play, have played sports, and nice. um, I don't know, we just, we just mush together well, so. Have you lived together yet? No, no, we start, we move in August 14th, that's the first day of, of school, like, that's not when classes start, I think that that's orientation week. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people from my school that are going to Berkeley, and we're all trying to get the same housing unit, not for any reason, but um, just because it's the nicest one, but not because we're trying to be together. So I think it'll be fun, though. I'm really excited. Sounds and, great. Like, this- Woo! I'm so excited yeah. for you. Is this the first, Terry Cooper, by the way, American <laughs> Family Therapist, Dr. Energy, hello. <laughs> um, just so it is not a voice coming out of the heavens, <laughs> out of nowhere. Um, so is this the first time you've lived alone? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, this will yeah. be, I mean, I've taken field trips for a week to Catalina or anything <laughs> like that. But, uh, you aren't only, though. I am so, only yeah. child, but I am really close to my parents and stuff, and um, you know, I was choosing between Berkeley and UCLA, and they were, um, they liked that UCLA was really close, and it's only a two hour car ride. I mean, more with traffic, but mostly that. And um, if I needed anything, they, or if they needed me, you know, <laughs> they liked being close by. But honestly, it's not that far. We drove up a few weeks ago for Cal Day, and it's an easier drive, I think, going up north as opposed to going out down south. I think I've said that before. Um, so, do you, not, do, you do your own it. laundry? No. See, yes. <laughs> there, the same yes. thing that was in my mind. I know. <laughs> I'll tell you why. That's because the list. <laughs> when I got my first apartment at age 18, I had this desk and I was piling my clothes on my desk and I couldn't understand why they were still there. Right. I know. At right. the end of the week, it was quite right. impressive. Right. And I'm going, why are they still there? Right. And then it dawned on me, my mother isn't here right. to pick them up and put them in the laundry and wash them and iron them and hang them up. Uh, and it was quite a shock. Uh, I never knew how to do First time I did laundry, I was in Russia and I did it in a bathtub. And I had no idea how to do laundry. And I was 20. Okay, and that is a God honest truth. I had no idea. My, I was so, my mother did everything. I mean, she I did. She did totally. She did everything. I feel the same way. Yeah. So, I I mean, I started, we went to, we went on a trip a few weeks ago and we had to do our laundry in the hotel and my 
Mom's like, okay, I'm going to give it to you so you can practice. And I mean, yeah. So I have a friend, one of my best friends went to boarding school um, two years ago. And I've just been talking to her a lot about how that transition was for her and stuff. And she said it's, you know, once you get used to it, you kind of get used to it. So YouTube. Yeah, that, that too. YouTube has a lot of different things. So if I ever, also, I mean, I think I'm my parents Hon- be honestly because they have this service. I have it for John. Okay. They have stuff that they they'll pick up your stuff, okay, and they drop it off. I have it for John. It's not, I, it doesn't wipe you I'll out. I'll look it up. Really, no, I'll look did. it up. They have it. I'm just I, I think at a school of thirty thousand yeah. students. You know why? Know because gonna, John started getting I don't know if they'll offer as much. Rock, you know, ripped off. And after a while, after three swipes where I like went through like three, four hundred dollars, I go, there's got to be an alternative to this. And it's so he much less. Lo- what, whatever, whatever, what whatever his stuff, high end oh, stuff got oh, like Louis taken. Vuitton. Yeah. Whatever his stuff. No, whatever. Lou, the clothing manufacturer is Lulu. Lulu. Oh, okay. His okay. stuff, his undies and all that stuff just got taken out of the dryer. It was three hundred and some odd dollars. Like his whole laundry stuff got like wiped out. And I'm like, John, find an alternative plan B. And it wasn't expensive. I was 20 some odd dollars. It wasn't expensive. So I got his stuff laundered. They picked it up and they dropped it off. And honestly, it was safe because he's not <laughs> yeah, in the best. Yeah, going to love hearing that. Well, it is because, you know, you get your stuff taken. And this is, I'm sorry, it's reality. No, it is. You get one load taken of your best stuff, like what you have on, you're going to cry. Okay, yeah. it, all the stuff you were going to wear for the week went. I'm just saying. I'm sorry, Berkeley, whatever. Johnny, John, John goes to holy names. Okay, I mean, doesn't no. holy or saint? It's not holy whatever. underwear. That's I'm for saying. Sure. <laughs> like all of his stuff was gone. Like all of his clothes. So what are you going to do? I'm just saying it happens. So wake right, up. Right. We you got know? the underwear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Either that, or just realize you need to monitor it. You can't leave. No, don't leave. So you when you when you when you're doing your wash, you're doing your homework there. Right. Don't leave. Yeah, okay. I uh, I think it'll be good just because there's a, quite a few of us and people that I know, too. I mm-hmm. think that we'll be able to go in little groups and do there stuff together. So um, I'm anticipating a lot of group, you know, really right. basic activities done together right. as groups and people being really confused and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So Living but, with uh, one person is challenging and um, and a has lots of good potential living with how many did you say where i have two other roommates two okay so there'll be three of you yeah okay and so you you know you'll work things out you yeah. come from different parts of the country you come from different cultural backgrounds mm-hmm. and and styles of doing things different parenting styles that have brought mm-hmm. you up it's about working it out mm-hmm. really and if you can communicate well together and make agreements and honor them should be fine and mm-hmm. fun but you know that's also something you get to when you're participating in a team sport or even you've done a lot of different team activities at school. Mm-hmm. You realize what it's like to be off school campus and as a group you got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just figuring out what restaurant to go to. Mm-hmm. So you you you've already mastered that ability. You I got mean, it. yeah, it, it's it'll Easy. be different to Fun. live with people and I honestly didn't want to do a triple because I was anxious about like having always somebody third wheeling, you know, but um but just based off the conversations that we've had and um, I'm sure as we continue to get to know each other better, et cetera, w- I think, you know, as you said, everything's an adjustment and we'll always have to be learning how to handle different situations, especially with each other. But I think we'll be able to do it as long yeah. as we don't spend too little or too much time with each other. Exactly. Stuff. A three-legged stool is the strongest stool. <laughs> <laughs> that? See, you didn't even think of it like that. You, you just You walked right into it's it. It's a great yeah. You're going to do great fine. Great You're going to do fine. <laughs> And if you have, you need any help, we got Jessica right here. It's pal. She's going to bring up her stick, and everyone's going to be in order. I know. Because I'll send her up there. Woo, we got pal in the house. Yeah. What's going on over at pal? Um, nothing much. We're trying to collect the grades for all the kids, get everybody going. Um, we do our tally of how the kids are doing, how their grades are going, um, being in the class sessions it's not so much of just given to them they got to work for it nice. so that's one of the ways that we keep them busy we nice. love pal what what new programs are we working on trying to fund um we are actually currently we opened up golf again i love golf so we're gonna have that throughout the summer nice and then we'll go from there you're still looking for kids we're not full right no never no? that's it <laughs> they'll take anybody yes we right? will 
And, no, and, and how much, what, I know, because it's a lot of money. How much does it cost to get into PAL? Um, nothing. Yeah, f- see? That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> you need PAL? If you need help, you go to PAL, right? Always, That's yes. That's it. And how do we get a hold of you? Um, we are over at 1235 Chapala, and you guys can also call. Go on our website. It'll be there. Our hours are 3 to 630. See that? I love you guys. Dominique and I, I'm telling you. And I don't even know why we didn't even think of the pal, you know? It's just like, you're like, the, what a gem. What a gem. And you, <laughs> yeah. As soon as I'm out, I said, what I say? I says, I want her. Yep. No, it's secretly <laughs> behind. Thank you. Co-host. It's like automatic. Co-host. So, so how would uh, a kid find you? Would they need to go through their counselor at school? Would they be able to walk in on their own if they're a minor and say, I'd like to join up? Uh, do they need the parental permission? How does it work for them to find you and to get involved in programs? We have a little bit of all of the above. Um, a lot of the kids come in because they hear it from their friends. And once they explain what it is, to, so the kids will come in looking for us. They talk to us at the front desk. I'm always there along with my coworkers. Um, they ask us, you know, what do you guys do? Uh, what can we do? We explain it to them. We give them a form. They go back home. Parents come back and they're like, oh my God, is this like really true? And yeah, yeah it is. So the parents love it. Thank you so come much. Back. Thank you. Love you. All right, Robert Brown, he's got to get out of here because he's got to do the minutes. That's you got right. a big board meeting, right. and I'm not letting you go because we love Cambridge and we love what you do. Oh, thank you. And I love, love you guys too. You got this hottest voice. Do you sing? And only in the you shower. Got that, you got this voice. I'm just saying. Oh, thanks. I yeah. don't. Yeah, usually when I hear you my own do, like, voice, relaxation I'm, tapes. I'm a little horrified. I know. Like, <laughs> is that me? How did you like it? It was fun. No, it actually came out well. It yeah, came out I like well. it. I walked in. I said, "Is he doing a Zen tape?" Mm-hmm. It was a very Zen. It was a good. I liked it. It was like a Zen tape. So Way tell us about it Cambridge. Real. It was a hot tape. So tell us about Cambridge and tell us what you're doing because you're all over the place. People don't even realize because you might have family in Ventura. Ventura. Okay, right. So LA, tell us where you're at, San Los Francisco. Angeles, because they paid us finders fee. <laughs> right, right. Yes. So we, we we let's talk about the finders fee because money could be you know hard to get. Well, for example, if right. a, if a, a current host. Mm-hmm can find us a family referral right and that student stays for 30 days right. we'll give you 500 bucks <gasps> 500 dollars that's the family you know referral what we do? fee we would give it to pal yeah. that's what that's what we do oh i just dropped something what happened when i hear I money i think it went down your shirt right, it's, 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 we like to don't it's not about team sports radio it's about donating the money that we get for the commercial to mm-hmm. someplace and right now, the only nonprofit I see right now is look at she's all excited. She wants to start a golf program. Okay, yeah. right, Doctor D, because you're doing this commercial for nothing, right? So Robert, how do people contact GP Homestay in Cambridge? So the website is gphomestay.com, gphomestay.com, and uh, so what we initially do is we host students that come from abroad. Mostly from Asia, I'd say ninety percent of the students are Chinese, and um, we look for quality host families to to take them in and feed them and get them to school and and uh, give them a little kick in the butt if they're needing help and with their academics. So yeah. And if you're a possible if you're a possible host family, what would you do to try to get involved? If you are a possible host family, if you're prospective host family, oh well, you can you can. Give me a call and, and ask any questions that you might have. Or on the website, there's a there'll be a gal on the other end. Once you fill out the inquiry form, she's going to call you to do a phone screen and answer whatever questions you might have. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of people who are like, oh, what well, she's bringing a stranger into my house? What's it going to be like? And so so we do get a lot of you know good questions along those lines. Um, is there any training like? Culturation, so that the host family will understand a little more about mm-hmm. the dyna- the psychological dynamics and yep. the culture of the person they're taking in. And the reason I'm asking you is, I had a, a no one trained me, and I had a Korean young girl come in, and she didn't make eye contact with any any of the adults who were speaking to her, and I thought that was very rude. And I said, why don't you look at people when they're speaking to you? And she explained in her.
her culture that younger people don't make eye contact with older people out of respect. Mm. I had no way of knowing that. And so this is important. So yeah. they do get trained to some extent we, we, yeah, we with do the different provide, cultures. We that, definitely provide yeah. training. To, uh, we have orientations throughout the year. We just have this, this new host portal where hosts can go online, and we already have pre-recorded trainings. Oh, wonderful. We have webinars throughout the school year where hosts all get together and, and you have and a recipe act. book <laughs> oh yeah a recipe book but yeah there's definitely lots of trainings and it's and it's a lot of support it's needed and if a kid is in a place if it's not a good match what happens well we try to do some mediations that's the first step mediations and, we, and i'm trained in all that sort of stuff and after maybe the second or third mediation we might have to uh just Find a new host. Find a new host or yeah. a new home. Because I've heard some horror stories, you know, of both from both ends. Not from your organization, but just from being a lot of people here in Santa Barbara do take kids in who go to school here, mm -hmm. go to the uh, college. And some of them talk about great kids and some of them talk about horrible hosts. And, you know, so yeah. uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it is an exciting potential adventure. It's an adventure and it's extremely rewarding. I can tell you that personally, but it does take some coordination of who right. fits right. with whom and what they want you know right. so if it, uh, I think yeah. a, a host that's that's wanting to learn a new culture but also accepting of the new culture yeah. that'll be a good that's a good, good match yeah. good I could really quick in a second these are the higher end kids and Cambridge is the highest end program and they have the highest end screaming screening because Dominique and I have gone through all the programs background checks background checks background I mean checks, honestly yeah. I mean they take DNA I mean seriously <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding that's a joke I mean but it is really it's all the it's on the upper end of everything it's the Ritz Carlton it just really is. The kids are the Ritz Carlton. The program is the Ritz Carlton, and they won the Ritz Carlton families. So if these kids are, when you say Ritz Carlton, I'm assuming you mean that their families have enough money to send them in style or yes. to send them mm -hmm. to be very comfortable. What happens when you have a kid whose expectations are higher than what's reasonable to expect because they've come from money or come from? They're grateful. The kids are grateful. Yeah. They're, they're very grateful to, to be able to come and have the, this experience. But if there is a shift in expectations, you sit and have a house meeting where you review house rules. And um, you always treat it as a, your candidate. So we're, we're, as a host parent, I'm a candidate as a host parent. And the student is a candidate to be in my house. So it's an at-will contract. We both have to agree. Yeah, communication is huge. Yeah, that's it. Okay, we're gonna sh let's take a break. Okay, very good. We love you. Thank you. You, I love your commercial. I'm not kidding. Do some Zen tapes. <laughs> I'm all day. And we're gonna listen to your commercial right now. How's that? All right. Uh, it's great. Erica Saw to take a little break. We'll be back with more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Saul of the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday. Well, Terry Cooper. Yeah. Dr. Energy. Why, why are you saying Dr. Energy like we're in a Zen meditation? I'm just because, you know, Robert Brown left, and I just, you know, I... So I, I'm going to ask you this on the air. You uh, said he was hot, and he should make hot. a Zen tape. I just... He's so, a nice guy. He's so, my brother in a past wait life. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Oh, my God. I'm not going to tell you the funniest story now. <laughs> so Zen is usually pretty cool yes. and mellow, and hot is pretty... Hot. Uh, <laughs> so is he both hot and cool? Yeah, but I look at the new new wave hot. Is just he's just like a cool hot guy. <laughs> yeah. That sounded a lot yeah. like what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he just like that? He's just Same like thing, that. Different. Yes, thank you. Yeah. He's you, a Bostonian. I will tell you what I picked up about him energetically. Yeah, yeah. I picked up that just sitting next to him. And, you know, I, I teach psychic development classes and intuition, so... Not the air I know. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I teach through this lady's school that I'm going to be introducing, so I'm very proud of it. And I felt that this guy was had a tremendous amount of integrity, yes. that he was um, hardworking, mm -hmm. that he absolutely believed in what he was doing, that he put in 100% into what he's doing, mm -hmm. that he genuinely cared to put out a quality product and not to save his job, but because 
of his integrity level. Yeah. Now, I don't know him, but that's the feeling that was projecting off of him. I think he is, he, yeah, he's a yeah. value add to the program, yeah. and we probably... Um, if we, I don't think we're going to shift out of it. But if we sit, if we stayed, he'd be one of the check marks of why we stay yeah. because of him, because he puts so much of himself in it. Absolutely. Like he gave everybody a rice cooker. Who does that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's it's just a like very he thinks guy. of the extra. Like I mean, we didn't need the rice cooker, but wasn't that nice? Yeah. And, and he doesn't depend on just what he knows. He makes sure that the host uh, parents all know each other and talk to each other. Right. So he's, he's really supportive of shared community. Exactly. Because yeah. I felt that he was heart connected to the students. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just, I've got, uh, you know, a, a, a pl- to plug this a student in with this family and hope it works. It felt like he really was invested right. in a, building a sense of loving community. And mm-hmm. more importantly, the feeling I got was that he wanted these kids to have lasting positive right. feelings about America, to right. have a memory of being in America and have it be a wonderful memory. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true, but that's the feeling I get. He went to him. Pure's game in Ventura. Pure pays, one of our students plays volleyball. He goes, he takes a picture of Pure's game, you know, playing, he goes, and he sends it to me. I'm like, who does that? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's extra. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was just like. And he's humble. Oh. Yeah. He's humble. He's, yeah. a, he's, he's not. And he feels almost like a religious person, like what a Christian I was going to see a to priest like. or something yeah, in the yeah, past. Yeah, like, you said like once I was a nun. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, that's why we're like, you know, like. Yeah. Just, and and yeah. we do, yeah. com- we do yeah. come back quite different. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that was very funny. <laughs> I'll tell you a story later. You're going to die. So, okay. so. Who do you think? So, um, did you hear that Moses. I, somebody sent me a cartoon. Can I share that? Oh, absolutely. It was a picture of Moses, and he was coming down the mountain with his tablet mm-hmm. and, you know, the Ten Commandments mm-hmm. on there. And it said, Moses, technologically, Moses was the first person to use a tablet and download from the cloud. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> but, yeah. And that's when I can tell on the air. Well, yeah. But you know, you know what? That, that joke makes a really good point. Technology is our ability to make use of everything that's around us. It's not just using a computer or using a phone. That's right. It's innovativeness, and that's really what makes the world go around is innovation. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can learn something, but we have to fly from that. Mm-hmm. We have to use it a template to grow beyond, mm-hmm. yeah. because that's evolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, speaking of education, that's a good segue. Ah. Does that mean you're ready for me to introduce my wonderful guest? Yes. Well, I'm really pleased to have back with us the interim VP of the Ex- School of Extended Learning, Melissa Moreno. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And she's a doctor. <laughs> so if you have a tummy ache, she can help you. <laughs> <laughs> you're a doctor. What's your doctorate in, Melissa? I'm a jurist doctor, so I'm actually a, you're a, JD? a licensed lawyer. Mm-hmm. Are yes. you? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not speaking to you then. <laughs> <laughs> I was a, I was a legal secretary. Secretary for twenty years. Oh wow! You no, know, I really liked lawyers. Yeah. I did, and so oh, that's interesting. And how did you get into doing this? Oh boy! Well, I w- un- came to Santa Barbara City College eleven years ago, knocking on the door to teach a class, and got roped into an administrative uh, role to uh, create the Entrepreneurship Center. That's how I started. So mm-hmm. I, I'm the founder of the Scheinfeld Center for Entrepreneurship. Oh. Wow! Did that for years. <coughs> Sorry. Butting in now. You're not. No, no, no. Um, I'm in the Entrepreneurship Academy at San Marcos High School. So we all submitted business plans recently, and uh, one of the juniors just won. Well, there you go. Now you've met the founder. So, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you want your autograph now? <laughs> just, uh, there you go. On a recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you like doing what you do? They roped you into it, but are you still here? So. Oh, yeah. Well, I never imagined myself as a career educator, administrator, that's for sure. And um, But it's it was just sort of fed my passion. I mean, my biggest passion, I think, is in the class classroom and teaching and so I think that's what makes me a good uh, administrator because I understand really from the um, ground zero what the students are interested in and so I think that adds something to my role and and then I became a dean and now I'm uh, spearheading this new initiative. So 
you're the interim VP. I am. Do we have to get used to somebody else, or do we get to keep you? Well, it depends. I'm going to have to compete for my own job here pretty soon. Oh, yeah. I know Andy, and I'm a good friend of his, <laughs> and I'll put in a good word. That's our. Oh, thank you. What is he, or CEO, or CFA? What are you? Well, he, you know, he he has Andy been the Harper. most uh, uh, generous and um, amazing person during this transition, and he is our. He's the former executive director for the Center for Lifelong Learning, which right. is now defunct. So that was my job, was to kind of change that up a little. And so he's become my uh, right-hand man, my confidant, my mentor, my partner in um, the School of Extended Learning. So he's our senior director at the School of Extended Learning. He's a wonderful man. I tell him he's the best boss I've ever had in my life. And I call him boss man, and he giggles. He's a delicious Englishman. And um, he's just charming and helpful and... Wonderful. I think every woman that's on faculty and students has a crush on Andy Harper. <laughs> anyway, I do. So it must be delicious to yeah. work with him. Yeah, he's, he's just the sweetest person on the planet. He's and so gracious. So Wonderful. So did you have a big learning curve of information? That you, I mean, you went from being a lawyer to being an administrator. I mean, was it difficult to learn all the stuff you needed to learn? Oh, my gosh. Well, the California Community College system is very complicated. And we work for a big uh, bureaucracy. Um, so I had to learn all the ins and outs of the system. And of and then uh, Santa Barbara City College is just one of 114 community colleges. So I had to learn about all of our ins and outs. I'm still learning. I learn something new every day. And so the higher up you get in the ranks, so I went from a director of the Entrepreneurship Center to a dean and now a vice president. And I learned, I, I continue to figure out this bear of a system. So you, will you be ready for the next elections to uh, run for president <laughs> <laughs> of Santa Barbara? Will you be um, president of Santa Barbara? Oh my gosh. Well, um, let me, you know, let me get my sea legs as a vice president and then talk to me, okay? There you go. There you go. Well, you know, the college is really fortunate to, that you have a legal background because in order to become a, a lawyer or to get your JD, there's so much that you research. I mean, you're not just just looking at the law, but you're looking at human beings and how we're interacting with the law. You're looking at all the information. You're looking at how society changes. And so all of that, you're taking into every every scope that someone could need to learn in order to come to school. So That's true. And I have um, an ability to be able to, I think, explain all of the complexities of the bureaucracy that we live in and work in and apply it in a simple lay person's way and, um, and we help, need that because yeah. a lot of folks and when we get into the next segment mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you to elaborate a bit on what the School of Extended Learning actually is mm-hmm. and particularly with its emphasis uh, for the purposes of our uh, show how it, it can work for teenagers and so um, that and also I wanted to ask you about um, the difference between the tuition fee and tuition free because that confuses some folks so right in the next segment we're looking to do that she could we'll do that <laughs> let's take a little break yeah all right let's do that erica salt of the queen team will be back with more after these messages We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salt, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday. Oh boy, we're back. We are. Okay, what's we going to talk about now? Well, we're going to ask some questions All of our wonderful right. Dr. Moreno. We're so blessed. It's Chili Moreno. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure she's gone. There before. <laughs> Has anybody ever said that? No. To you? Oh, I, I think I just have a taste for Mexican food. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we, st- I started off teaching at Adult Ed, and then it became the Center for Lifelong Learning, and now it's the School of Extended Learning. So can you help folks understand? You know, what is the School of Extended Learning and how is it different? How is it the same? Is it still adult ed? Just talk to us a little bit about that so folks can understand. Yeah, sure. So our uh, new president, Dr. 
Anthony Beebe came from San Diego, and he was uh, really well versed in adult ed. And when he stepped foot on our campus, I think he saw a real gap and something that was missing because we had transitioned away from so many free uh, programs and built, uh, and as a consequence, built a wonderful and huge uh, fee based program called the Center for Lifelong Learning. So when he he came onto the scene, and the board of trustees were all in agreement that we should really be bringing back adult ed programming. And so my job was to sort of flip it on its head and reduce the fee-based programs because they're expensive. It's wonderful, wonderful programming. It's pretty expensive. So we wanted to bring back a free programs where we could. And so my job really was to kind of bring back the free adult education programs and then reduce our tuition, uh, our, our fee-based programs. But as a result, we have a very robust program. We're continuing to offer the ones that we can't have be free and, and charge fees. And, um, so we're, we're bringing it all back. And so Feb, uh, fall of 2018, this coming semester, you'll see the, the full gamut of the transition that we've made. And thank you for that, for explaining that. Um, you said there are some classes that cannot be free. Yeah. Can you help people understand how f- classes get funded and which ones can and which ones can't and why they can? Yeah, so this is all very largely regulated by the state of California. And so there's about 10 areas that we can bring on uh, as tuition-free programming. And there's some critical areas that we can't. Fitness is one of them. So fitness will always be a, a fee attached to it. And so all of our um, yoga classes and dance classes will continue to be uh, a charge. Uh, but what we're bringing, what we can bring free is um, the English courses, all the creative courses, the art courses, the psychology courses. So many of the courses that you might teach will come to be tuition free. And then the ones that are... Um, you know, we've decided to group some courses together in the fee-based program to make it interesting. So, for example, cooking, culture, and travel will be a fee-based program, and we're going to be bringing back uh, travel abroad programs. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, so we're, we're excited to have, uh, continue to support the fee-based program, but really bringing back hundreds of courses, like 1,200 courses that are going to be free. It's amazing. In the fall. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, now, I didn't know that, and I teach there. Yeah. <laughs> that's really exciting. Yeah, it's like really Thank exciting. you. Sure. Wow, that's wonderful. I think the other ones that are not covered by the state are things like the arts and crafts classes, right? I mean... Th- no, we're bringing all the arts and crafts... Uh, to be free. There's there's going to be a You heard it of, first on Teen Sports Radio, yeah, kids. Yeah, ceramics. <laughs> In fact, if wow. there are opportunities for teens to come with their parents and take the classes. So we can enroll minors in the program, and it's kind of a fun thing to do, especially this summer. We've got classes that are starting on May 21st, and you might want to do a fun class with your mom or dad before you go away to college. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Yeah. If you've never done a class with with a parent, I, I highly, highly recommend it. Well, all I wanted to say, too, about this is um, I know that when I was taking my Spanish classes, I always had students also in the classes that were um, older, and, you know, they had gra- they had already had lively careers and were now more interested in changing gears or maybe just developing their language um, language. Uh, De- eloquence eloquence exactly sorry i cannot think of the word but um but anyway it just is a really great opportunity to develop so many skills that you feel you might need to improve on um and you know it used to be called the center for lifelong learning where we are creatures that are always ingesting new information and um the only way we'll really grow is if we're always learning something new. And right. one of the best ways to do that is to do it in a form, at least for me, in a formal class structure where you have kind of the accountability of making sure that you're learning everything. But 
you know, it's low stakes and it's a really great way to make sure that you're becoming qualified in this information. Yeah, I just like the whole thing about community. You know, you're off the TV, you're not on a, a piece of a device, and you're in and you're in a room with people. I love mm-hmm. it. I just I applaud you. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Take a little break. It's Erica Sala, the Queen of Team. Fill up your coffee. We'll be back with more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salter, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday. All right, Terry. Yeah, so Dr. Miranda, we'd love to have you come back because we have lots more questions for you, and I'd particularly like to know about what the SBCC promise is and how teens can uh, involve themselves in our new school. And so would you be willing to come back and visit with us and tell us about that? Absolutely. Happy to come back. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Dominique, what's up? Oh, my gosh. L- lots up. Lots up. But uh, the most recent what's up, TED Talks. I don't, I don't know how many people get a chance to just pop on YouTube and just pick up a recent TED Talk. Um, I don't know how this one came up. I might have seen it on Facebook. But I saw a TED Talk, and it was labeled The Fierce Face of the Feminine. And um, it's by uh, Camille. Let's see. I'm sorry to Spell it. put your last name, A-R-D-A-G-H, uh, Ardaha. Ardaha. Uh, and um, the reason why I took a look at this TED Talk was really important. It had to do with anger, and specifically anger that women feel. And um, what I realized, I, I really appreciated some of the salient points she made in, you know, 17 minutes. For the most part, women in society, we're, we're allowed to meetings so long as we don't get emotional, right? That's the understatement, is that, yeah, come participate. Everybody's equal. You know, have an equal voice. But don't get emotional, right? And the problem is that fierce anger when, in particular, women see injustice and injustice to children. There is a mothering instinct that hits up, and it is a rage that um, is beyond words that women feel. And you don't have to be a mother. It, it, you feel it as a teenager. You're just being in a female body with the estrogen, how the brain's wired and so forth. Something just just hits that rage button. And so what this woman was speaking to is in the fierce face of the of the feminine is that how do you relate to that anger that you feel inside and how do you make uh, peace with it and have space with it and have it be a part of our society because right now most of the time when people think of angry shadow emotions there's either numbing out or out of control and both of those options are not options when you suppress your anger, you're not just suppressing your anger, you're suppressing all of your emotions. You're suppressing your ability to experience intimacy. You're expressing your ability to value you you being vulnerable. And so you can't connect to your family and your friends and society if you are numbing out to your anger. So as women, we need to make space and come in contact with our anger, but do it in a way where we hold the presence of being conscious. (coughs) And so what this woman did was she told a story, and she told a story about Kali and Shiva. And in most stories of mythology, when they talk about rage, it's a woman. So she was telling me this. I'm uh, Kali who? I had no idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm from, um, sorry. Okay. Terry's looking at me like, oh, shut up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in Hindu mythology, um, Kali is the archetypal uh, feminine, the archetypal female that comes in at a time of a fierce battle between the gods and the demons. So the gods sort of like hold space for that part in humanity that is compassion, is loving, learning, all the high arts of society and, and civilization. And the demons are the hatred and the ripping things apart and the separativeness. And um, what she brings together in this TED Talk is beautiful, where Kali comes in, wins the battle for the gods against you know the demons, but Kali is so full of rage, she keeps destroying even after the battle is won. So how do you pull that rage back in? And so the quality of Shiva is that presence. It's that presence before thought. 
It's that ability to choose. And so Shiva helps bring Kali back in the line, and she doesn't end up destroying the world. So that's really great. But um, I just wanted to speak to the fact, especially if you're watching the news and you're seeing things go on in school, there is anger and rage inside of us all, men and women. And how do we hold space for that? Mm-hmm. Well, you breathe into it, into it, you be present with it, and you welcome it as a part of how we're going to bring medicine to our current situation. We need that energy to solve our current problems. I love that you're touching on that. I think it's also so important to look at how you're manifesting all of your energy and how it's introducing itself into your life, um, where it's where it's being pocketed and invested. And um, yeah, with anger especially, I think it's really important to never suppress anything that you're fe- like your, any of your emotional feelings. Um, and where you're at, but instead look at how you're channeling that energy. Like Erica is obviously so talented at art and we've, you know, she's been creating amazing pieces and she had never even thought to do that channel before, but really, you know, this goes back to the learning too. Just trying different things and looking at what is your best way to manifest your energy is really going or channel your energy rather is really going to be what benefits society in the end it's that balance between um the stuff that gets fired in the amygdala which does not lend itself to logic and then shifting as best you can into the prefrontal cortex where your higher learning is where your ability to articulate is so it's it's learning techniques for negotiating between that um, fight flight or uh, mm. response or freeze response and being able to articulate it in a way that people can hear it uh, so I'm thinking there's a difference between uh, expressing your anger and getting that out of your system through maybe a learning or artistic expression, but there's also uh, words that need to be expressed and how they're expressed. And we're having a whole conversation on SBCC campus right now about how words matter and mm-hmm. the choice of words and how to organize your thoughts around expressing those difficult topics. We've had, um, what's his name? Uh, Rosenberg, uh, nonviolent communication. We had some courses uh, a while back and that's a whole movement on how to articulate and how to speak about your feelings in a way that people can hear it where you are feeling Feelings are honored, but they're not said in a way that alienates or turns people off. So that's nonviolent communication. I say three words. we got to go to break. Let it out. Let's take, let's take a break. Erica Salda, be back with more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Tea Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda. Please tune in every single Tuesday. You said something really deep, um, Alexandria. I don't know if you just can right like, now? Go, yeah, like at oh. break. You know, I like what you said. Do you remember what you said? No. Okay, good. What I was just saying yeah, right now. Yeah, I like what you said. Yeah. Do you want me to repeat? Yeah, it, it was good. Oh, okay. I was saying that I think I was interpreting what um, Dominique was saying a little bit differently earlier, but everybody is born. A different, you know, for a different purpose, in my opinion, like to serve a different niche uh, or purpose. I can't talk. Um, they all find everyone finds their different niches. We all have different passions, etc. Different and forms p- of expression. Different forms of expression. Part of that is that we all um, tonally have different energies, etc. And um, I think it's important to acknowledge, too, that if somebody expresses themselves differently than other people, we should have a respect for that. But right. Just they're even not though wrong. They're, right. Exactly. Right. They have a different perspective because of the way that they grew up or the way that they were simply put born. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I think that that, you know, discussion has a lot to do with it. Women might come off as being more emotional or whatever, but we have we have that instant response for a reason. And that's because we have evolved to protect our young, et cetera, and have that nurturing response. And not that all women express themselves that way or all men express themselves very like stern or whatever, but not to put people in boxes. Right. Exactly. Not to put people in boxes, but um, it's important to give some opportunity for people to express themselves at the way they feel fit. 
and communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've got to be able to communicate however different you are. You've got to find a common way to understand one another because most of the disagreements are not because somebody's good and somebody's bad or somebody's right and somebody's wrong. It's simply we have not communicated mm-hmm. with each other because the human experience is common to all. Mm-hmm. We want peace. We want love. We want safety. We want acceptance. I find it interesting as you share that, Terry, that I wa- I've watched a number of movies and television programs that start out and you have these two uh, combatants, if you will, in this dynamic. I, and I guess maybe the movie uh, Batman and Superman is the best one because uh, supposedly there was this some, I, I, I must have come in in the f- after the first five or ten minutes where they showed what the conflict was over right and here Batman and Superman are they're beating the daylights out of one another right and in the last 15 minutes of the movie they they finally are exhausted from pounding on each other and they start talking and they start dialoguing about how well you did this because well well but you did this because and they got to the point where they began to understand how this conflict started both of their previous understandings were wrong because they didn't bother to stop now i understand in the in the media in in movies and television if you have that conversation in the first five minutes of the show the show's five minutes okay i get <laughs> you don't that. have a story <laughs> you don't have a story no drama but that's where we are today. We, we you know, I, I've, I've put this out there following 9-11. Has anybody bothered to stop and ask them why they're so upset and angry? We don't want to do that because we, for, for whatever reason, well, maybe it's something in the brain. Countries that have political agendas. If we can well, have people too, but talking to one another without the politics, without the differentiations, we would find that this great common ground, we all want the same thing. Yeah, and I just wanted to make room for emotion, that it is okay for people to emote, and we're going to find words. At the end of the day, you just got to be kind. How's that? Santa Barbara, have a wonderful week. God bless you. See you next week!